This is a lead code challenge. It's called remove duplicates from sorted array. We'll have an integer array called nonce and it's sorted in non-decreasing order. What this means is that it's not necessarily in sequential order, meaning that it can be 1, 4, 9, 15, 20. That is still in non-decreasing order, but the elements are not incremented by one at every position. That array is going to have some duplicates. It's always possible. And we need to remove these duplicates in place meaning that we don't have to copy the elements and create a new array to remove the duplicates. So every unique element needs to appear only once. We need to maintain the order of the elements. And then when we are done, we need to return the number of unique elements inside the array. How we're going to do that is explained here. We need to fill the first k elements of the array with the unique values. For example, this is an array. It has zero duplicated one three times and then it has other duplicates here there are only five values five unique values that is so these are zero one two three four the output is going to be five if you look at the function here we need to return an integer which is the number of unique elements and the first k items in the array with k being five are the unique elements in non-decreasing order they specify here we are not allowed to allocate extra space for another array. So we need to modify the input array in place. So the extra memory space here is constant. Notice that if you look at their function signature here, they have the data type, which is a vector of integers. And then they have this ampersand here because the vector inside of your program is going to be passed by reference. If you remove this, it means you're gonna get a copy of the input vector and that's not what we want because whatever changes we're going to perform inside of this function needs to reflect in this input vector and that's why it's passed by reference. This here is my solution and then we're going to test it with these test cases. The first array is going to be 1, 2, then I'm going to have 1, 1, 2 and so on. I'm going to explain my code now. You see these first two lines here. This is to handle an empty array. So if it's empty, then there are no unique items. K is going to be zero and we don't have to do anything. We simply return zero. And if there is only one element, then K is one and it's already sorted. So we don't need to do anything. We simply return one. In case there are more than one items, such as one, two right here, then we can use a method with fast and slow pointers. I'm using the word pointers here a bit loosely because I'm not actually referring to memory addresses. You can see these as indices or arrows pointing to different positions inside the arrays. So the first pointer here is going to be i and I'm starting at zero. So for example, one here. And the second one is going to be k and I'm going to start it at position one. This is safe because we know that if the function did not return on the first line or the second line, then there are at least two items. So k can be one and this is safe. Count is also gonna be one because we know there is at least one unique element. If there are duplicates, we'll need to search inside the array for other unique elements of larger value. So, so long as k is less than the size of the array, meaning that we can still explore the array, we're gonna verify if the item at position k is less than or equal to the current item, which is i. Now i here is the slow pointer, which moves position by position whenever we need it to. And k is the fast one. So k is what we're using to search for larger values that are not duplicates. Now, if this evaluates to true, meaning that we need to look for a larger value that is unique, we're gonna increase k to continue searching and we're not gonna do anything else inside of this loop. So I have this continue keyword which means skip to the next iteration. Once this evaluates to false, it means that we need to update the value of our current elements. This is when we jump into this else block here. We're gonna move i by one. So for example, i was here. We need to update the second element here with the number two, which k was able to find. So if i was still at zero, we need to move i to index one, which is what we're doing right here. And then we need to assign the value of the element at position k, which is two, to the element at position i. So for example, this value here, one, needs to be equal to two. And then we can record these updates. So this means this array here would be one, two, and then two again here. But because our counts would increase by one, we would record two here as two unique values, with the two unique values being one 
and two. We don't care about what comes after the count value here. And that's why in the example, they have underscores. Now, of course, you can't have underscores in an int vector, but they simply have this to prove that whatever comes after the k value here doesn't matter. So in our case, this return value is the value of counts. When we are done with the repetitive steps, we can return the count. This here is taking a single pass at the vector. So the time complexity of this algorithm is linear. Let's now run the algorithm with these four test cases. And we've passed all of them. Let's submit this now. And then I'm going to switch to my um, Visual Studio code and explain to you what is happening in the background. So we've passed all the test cases. Instead of Visual Studio, I've replicated the function here with my own algorithm. And then I've also added another function to print the vector. This is because inside of my remove duplicates methods, I've added these lines to print the vector to demonstrate what happens at every iteration right here. Inside of my main function here, I'm testing with these values, 1, 4, 4, 6, 8, 8, 9, 9, that I'm getting the returned integer from my remove duplicates function after passing my vector here, which is by reference. And then I'm printing here the number of unique items inside of the vector. So when I run this code, I get this in the console. This is what we get at first. By the end of the algorithm, when it's done running, we have 1, 4, 6, 8, 9 in order. And these are the only five unique items inside the vector. And they are all sorted in the first positions of the array. And if you look at this here, it's the same vector here. And we also had 1, 4, 6, 8, 9. Same thing as here, 1, 4, 6, 8, 9. So that's it for this lead code challenge. I hope that you guys learned something. If you like this solution, please subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you next time.